hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime king 2 and today i'm going to be giving you the last what if of today part 11 of what if naruto was neglected by his family remember to get this one to 100 like as usual share this to all of your friends on your social media platform and also go ahead and check out what if naruto was taken by orochimaru i post a new episode of that on this channel so go ahead and enjoy that and also, over on Anime King, I post a new episode of What If Naruto Took His Training Seriously. So go ahead and check out that as well. And I also post a new episode of What If Naruto Had Multiple People Inside of Him. So go ahead and check out that as well, guys. And remember, if you're new and this is the first time you hear my voice and you enjoy the videos on both channels, go ahead and click that red subscribe button and join Anime King and Anime King 2 and become a part of the Anime King family. And thank you all for your help and your support. And remember to go ahead and comment down below and tell me if you're new. I'll be replying and talking back to all of you. So without further ado, let's get straight into this new episode. So, the last time we left off, before Naruto and his group left the village, Narume asked Naruto if he can release the seal a bit so to let the Kayubi out without affecting her as Naruto then told her to lift up her shirt as he took down the seal and told her when he get back to his village he will work on it and with that him and his group headed off meanwhile after witnessing the battle in the Chunin exams the Hayugas came to Hayashi and talked to him about Hinata as he wanted to toughen up Hinata a bit more so, after talking to the Mizukage, he got permission for Hinata to stay outside of the ruins of the Mist Village with a couple of Hayugas to toughen her up for training as she stayed out there for a week. She then came back to the village as she and the girls stayed there as she had two days left before she returned back to Konoha as they were talking and they asked Hinata who she had a crush on and she told them Naruto. Ever since she met him again and he came back to the village, she had a huge crush on him. As the girls accepted that, seeing that he was under the CRA, he could be with multiple of them. And they really liked Hinata. That night, Naruto came back from a mission as he was pretty beat. As he went over to Mai's house. As Mai then decided that she wanted to take the relationship to the next level. No one was there to stop them, so they end up having sex. As Mei then came home, as Mai and Naruto had a rush in her room as Naruto hide under the bed because he knew if Mei see him she was actually going to kill him but in luck she didn't found him as he ended up escaping the next day the other girls saw the way Mai was walking as they know something was wrong and Haku saw the amount of blushing going on between her and Naruto as Haku then asked what was going on after a while they managed to get information out of Mai as she told them everything that happened. So the day went on and Hinata wanted to tell Naruto that she liked him before she left the village. Naruto was always oblivious and he knew that about himself but seeing how the way Hinata was acting he kissed her. As Hinata was surprised she fainted as the girls brought her back to Mai's house. So yeah guys that was basically the last part we left off. You guys can switch across the players and check it out for yourself. So let's start this new episode. This episode begins right after that as both Naruto and Hinata went out to grab a meal and talk to each other as they were walking around the village having nowhere really to go they were just having fun and getting to know each other better. Hinata then spotted a title in a local store window Naruto finds a new girl to be in the CRA program as it was him and Hinata kissing someone take a picture of them and now it was public news. Why and how is this in the news already? Hinata asks, completely shocked, as this just happened a few hours ago. Well, you see, I am kind of one of the famous heroes in the rebellion, so people keep a close eye on my life, said Naruto. As Hinata then felt something dark around her, as she looked around to see all of the girls walking on the road, glaring at her. Don't worry, they're just a bit jealous, said Naruto. Inside of the village elsewhere. So, do you all remember your orders? A man asks. As he was currently wearing an Anvu mask. He was a root Anvu. Yes sir, the other said. Let's go. As explosion could be heard through the village. 
as they went to the hospital and started to wreak havoc there. Explosions went off. Chunks of the building fell. As the mixed ninjas realized what was going on. As they attacked the Anvus. As the Anvus were all caught or killed after destroying several buildings in the mist. Mai was in her office. Mizukagi said Chulin as he came in. The hospital and a couple other buildings were attacked. We managed to capture two of them and kill the other two. But they have seals on their tongues, stopping them from talking. What? Bring me a seal master to break the seal and then torture the information out of them and find out who sent them as the Chunin quickly run out of the cage tower. Back at Konoha in the Count's room, everyone was waiting to hear the reason why the Hokage called this meeting. Minato opened the door as he entered. He then stopped as he activated the room, defense, and anti-spy seals. Counsel, it has come to my attention, he said as he sat down, that some of Konoha ninjas have become weak. So we must change some things around so we can keep our title of the strongest village. So I give the elders permission to see all of our ninjas information and change their ranks to what the new Konoha thinks that they deserve. Now, most of the ninjas will be lowered down to a lower rank and most of the genies will be sent back to the academy for more training. But for the new promoted Shunins, we won't send them back to the academy. We will just let them become a new genin team again. When he said that, everyone started to shout. How dare you! Those ninja earned their ranks and they deserve them. Well, except for the damn Uchiha, who still doesn't know anything about teamwork, Tasumi yelled. Immediately, several Anvus arrived as they restrained those who were arguing as they saw the letters N-E on their masks. You even brought back the root Anvus? How dare you, Tasumi yelled, as all of them were thinking the same thing. Yes, I am your cage, the dictator, and if you don't follow me now, I will kill you for insubordination, Minato told them. You bastard, what happened to the man who actually cared? The one who tried to let his son forgive him for all the crap that he caused? Kushina said out loud. I only did that because I thought I could still use him later on. I never cared about them anyways. My whole family was nothing but pawns in my plan. Only after I finish my plan, I will actually go and find someone I want to create a true family with. Minato told her as he looked her dead in the eyes, as she was even more pissed off and wanted to rip off his head for what he was saying. Okay, now this meeting is over, and I doubt I will get any more trouble from any of you, said Minato. Inoichi then connected all of the ninja's mind before they left the room, as they allow him to do it. What do you want? Hayashi asks, with the mind walker in his head. I don't like Minato's crap just as much as you guys do. Let's all meet up at Training Field 66 entrance and talk more about the subject. Inoichi told them as they all mumble in agreement as they went off. Right outside Training Ground 66. Okay, the temporary seals are up, Kushina told them as they all sat down in the room. Thank you. Now what are we going to do about this? Inoichi asked as he was clearly annoyed. I think we should have a revolt and kick him out of the village like the mist did. Most of the ninjas will follow us. Yes, that works for me. But we need to have the ninjas on our side before we call out for rebellion. So let's have a vote, said Kushina. As she was the first person to vote to have a rebellion. As the rest of them vote yes, except for Hayashi, who wanted the help from the shadows as he didn't want to get caught up in all of this. So they all talked for a bit, until one hour later, when they decided to meet up at a later date, except for Kushida and Hayashi, as she wanted to talk to him about something. Hayashi, can I ask you a favor? Kushida asked. Depends on what it is, Hayashi told her. Well, you see when Naruto was here, I couldn't work up my nerves to talk to him, because I didn't know what to say to him. I just hope he would listen because he didn't even spare a glance at me. Anyways, here is what I ask of you. Will you let me to be the one to get Hinata, so I can talk to him while I'm at the miss? Kushina asks, giving him her best puppy dog eyes. He went quiet for a few minutes, until he said yes, but he will send a Hayuga along with her. As Kushina gave him a hug, 
Thank you, she said as she break the hug. As she went off to go pack. As he just looked down. This is going to be messed up if my counts ever find out about it. I will just send one of her caretakers to make it look like a Hayuka is going to pick her up. Later on at the gate, Kushina said goodbye to Hayashi and thanks for what he did for her as she headed off with one of Hinata's caretaker. It took a while but they finally arrived at the mess as Kushina and the Hayuga didn't really talk that much. The Hayuga was to herself and she didn't really talk. When they arrived Kushina said that she was hungry. She wanted something to eat before she talked to her son. Well she was basically buying time to come up with her mind what to say to Naruto after this long time. As Kushina then finished her meal as she got up trying to find Naruto so she can make it up to him after years of neglecting and ignoring him. So she ran around the village hoping to find him. As she got information that he lived with the owners of the Yoshi market and she was now there. Hello, excuse me, is Naruto here? Kushina asked the young girl who was at the counter. Why? said Ayaka. Well, you see, I need to talk to him about important matters. So, if you can tell me where to find him, Kushina told her. Well, he went out a little while ago with a girl. So, he's probably around the village somewhere. Ayaka told her not seeing any reason to lie to this woman. But after they said that, they heard the door open and noticed it was Hinata coming in first. As Naruto stepped in, hey Ayaka, I want you to meet. But he then stopped as he noticed Kushina in the shop. Hello, dear Hinata, said Ayaka. I've heard about you from the other girls. Hi, I'm Naruto's adopted sister, you could say, but we're like family, said Ayaka with a smile. Hello, said Hinata, as she then looked between Naruto and Kushina, knowing exactly why there was so much tension in the air between the two of them. Naruto, can we talk, please? Kushina asked quietly. No, Naruto said, as he didn't even bother to look at her. Please, just for a bit. I know you probably hate me and for a good reason. But I just want to try and explain my... But Naruto cut her off. Don't you dare say you're sorry or call me son. You are nothing to me after you decide to follow that bastard of a cage. Naruto yelled at her, causing her to flinch. Son, what is going on here? Ayaka asks, clearly confused. This, Ayaka, is my uncaring mother, the one I told you about, Naruto said. As Naruto was looking at Kushina because he didn't trust her, thinking that she might try something, as she saw that, as tears immediately came at the corner of her eyes. Naruto, I know you probably hate me, but please, just give me a few minutes, I just want to talk to you. Please, she said. You guys never listened to me when I was there, why should I listen to you? Naruto asked. I might be able to forgive Narumi because she wasn't much a part of it but you and Minato. How could I ever forgive the both of you? Naruto said to himself as he was pissed off and angry as he started to release some killer intent forgetting that Hinata and Ayaka were in the shop. Naruto then felt a slap on his cheek as it was Ayaka. Why did you hit me? Naruto said. Please calm down said Ayaka. You're usually smart and you think things through. Why aren't you doing it now? I know what you told me about her, but at least listen to her for a bit and then decide what you want to do. Just listen to what she has to say. Please, for me, said Ayaka as she gave Naruto puppy dog eyes. Naruto let out a sigh as he then turned to Hinata. I'm sorry for our day to end this way. I guess we can do this again, said Naruto with a smile. Y yeah, sure, said Hinata. Kushina. Let's talk in the house, said Naruto, as he walked off, not even looking behind him. As they went inside, okay, talk, Naruto said, wanting to get this done as soon as possible. Well, Naruto, first of all, I just want to tell you how sorry I am. I was acting like an idiot back then, not even noticing that my son was getting tortured. And I want to make everything up to you, Kushina said. And why should I forgive a Minato lover, Naruto said, as Kushina got angry at that. Please, don't call me that now. I might have loved him before, but I realize that he's nothing but a hateful, heartless bastard. In the last meeting we have, he told me to my face that he never loved me or any of my children. Naruto then sat down in a seat away from her, as now he was kind of interested to hear what she had to say. Tell me everything, Naruto said, 
as Kushina told him everything that has been happening at Konoha since he left and what they found out about Minato. As she didn't leave out anything as this went on for hours. When Kushina was finally finished she let out a huge sigh as she waited for Naruto reaction. So he has gotten even worse said Naruto. But I am going to tell you the same thing that I told Narumi. We are not on good terms. As Kushina frowned at that as she lowered her head. But it will take time said Naruto. Huh said Kushina. Yes it will take time for us to reconnect again. But I can't call you mother because we aren't mother and son anymore. What are you talking about she said. Well remember what I said back at the house. So I have no DNA of yours or of Minato. That is why I have no problem in being forced to date Narumi. And I also made up my own last name, mixing yours and Minato. So I am Naruto Uzukazi. Naruto told her, Okay, that's fair enough. So I guess I have to take Hinata back to the village now. So I guess I'll see you then, Kushina told him. As she wasn't sure what to do now. As Naruto gave her a small smile, as he told her bye. As her face lit up, even though you say you're not my son again, I will still treat you as my son no matter what she said. As she said her goodbyes, as the caretaker and Kushina went off with Hinata, with Hinata saying goodbye to Naruto. But before Kushina left, she went to visit Mei Terumi, as she told her about what is going to happen soon at Konoha, about a rebellion against Minato. After Kushina the Hayuga and Hinata left, Naruto and the girls were at the gate. Well, that was an interesting day, said Naruto. Yeah, but what about your mother? I mean Kushina, said Haku. What about her? Naruto asked confused. Well, you guys seem to be on better terms. Does this mean you finally forgive her? Haku asked as Naruto chuckled a bit. Ha, huh, that is good. How could I forgive her with just one conversation? I mean, we are on better terms now, seeing that I kind of understand her now. But everything that happened to me when I was much younger, it hasn't disappeared. Naruto said Megami, you have to forgive her. She's your mother after all. As Naruto growled a bit. So I am supposed to forgive Minato as well? He asks. No, he doesn't deserve it. But Kushina, she was caught up in his lies. Just as you were. Now, don't be mad at us. You know we're right, said Megami. Naruto released a sigh. Alright, he said. I have to admit, you guys are right. And I will take that into consideration, I promise. And don't worry, said Naruto, as he gave all of them a quick kiss on the cheek. I would never be mad at you guys, he said. Haku then came up with the idea for them to relax at the hot springs, as they all agreed to that. As they got there, they all went to their changing area. Haku was changing extremely fast. Hey Haku, what's the rush? asked Mai. Nothing, I just want to get into water quickly, as Haku changed quickly, as she rushed over. As Naruto got out of a change in part as he was heading to the male side of the hot spring. As Haku came face to face with him. Oh, you got changed fast, said Naruto. Um, I want to ask you something, said Haku. In private, she said to Naruto. As Naruto realized that she was really nervous. Huh? What is it? He asked her. Well, I just want to see if you would go to the mixed bath with me. Huh? What? He said. As he looked at Haku, okay, I guess he said as the both of them walked into the mixed bath which was in between the female and the male bath. As Naruto went inside as Haku took a deep breath as she followed behind him, come on you prepared for this, now put your plan in action she said. As she then used ice to freeze the door lock so no one could enter. As Naruto went into the bath, as soon as the door was frozen she dropped her towel and went over to Naruto. As Naruto's eyes were closed and he was leaning against the wall so he didn't see her drop her robe. As she then slipped into the water as Naruto opened one of his eyes. As he then felt Haku pressed against him. Ha Haku what are you doing? He said. Don't worry everything's gonna feel much better soon she said. Did you have a good time with Mai? Haku asked. As Naruto didn't say anything. Well she told me that she had a good time. So, I want to have a good time as well, said Haku. Haku, we can't do it here, what if we get... But Naruto couldn't get a finish that sentence, as she pressed her lips against his. Don't worry, she said after breaking the kiss. 
I froze the door with chakra infused ice so no one will ever get in here unless I want them to. As she started kissing him again and Naruto after remembering what happened with him and Mai, he couldn't hold back because he enjoyed that day as well. As the both of them weren't wearing anything so they went at it. As after a while Haku's ice melted off the door. As Haku was leaning on Naruto's chest, the both of them were still naked and in the water. Back with the other two girls, they were wondering where the hell did Haku go, seeing that they caught one of their other friends here and they had a conversation with her and that is why they were so late. You don't think she went into the mixed area by mistake didn't you, Megamine asked. That might be possible, maybe we should check, said Mai, as the both of them walk over there. As they quickly opened the door and entered, as they saw Haku leaning on Naruto's chest as the both of them had their eyes closed. As they walked in, so what's going on said Megamin as both Naruto and Haku snapped their eyes open. As they turned, immediately Megamin and Mai took in the situation. Wait, that's what you guys were doing in here? said Mai. You guys did it didn't you? said Mai as she looked at the both of them. As Haku was blushing like crazy and Naruto turned his head. As the Megamine then grumbled, that means I am the only one here who still hasn't done it yet. Well that's unfair, she said. As Megamine dropped her towel, as she pushed Haku away, as she then started to kiss Naruto. As the other girls were looking at her. What are you doing? asked Mai. Well, you guys have your fun with him. Now it's my turn, said Megamine. Now. Do something about the door so I can have my turn, she said. Really? You want to do it right now as well? Said Mai, as she looked at Megamine with disbelief. It is only fear, said Megamine. Haku then got up as she went over to the door. You're actually gonna allow her to do this right here? Why, of course not. We had our chance, now it is hers. As Haku froze the door. As Haku and Mai stood there, as they watched Naruto and Megamine get it on. As for some reason, they couldn't look away. As they just stood there. As the both of them start to feel hot. When she's finished, it's my turn again, said Mai. Huh? said Haku. Why should it be your turn again? Well, because I went first, and then you, and then Megamin, so it's my turn again. No, I want to be next. As if two of them start to argue, while Naruto and Megamin weren't paying them any mind. Right here, we're going to go into a flashback. Yesterday, at the Sand Council room, what are we going to do? Our cage is dead and we don't have an appropriate person to take its position. And we attack the Mizukage of the Mist. So we need to figure out a way to prepare for war or to try and get them to forgive us. One of the council members said, worried. Well, I say we should just wait a while until Gara is level-headed enough to be our next cage. In the meantime, we will just contain these meetings to control the village. But for the miss, I suggest that we try to get a treaty between our two villages. As the council talk over it, and immediately, Gara and his two siblings were sent packing. As we come back to the previous time, at the miss village. Finally, we made it here, said Conkru as they arrived to the hidden miss. Quit complaining, anyway. Gara, this is a test for you, so make sure you do your absolute best, Temari said, as Gara simply nodded slightly in response. So with that, they went, as they set up a meeting with Mai, but while they wait, they decided to get some food from a nearby sushi place. As they entered, they saw some familiar faces, as Naruto noticed them. Hey Gara, Temari, Catman. It's a surprise to see you guys here, Naruto said. Oh hi, wait, what are you doing here anyways? Mai asked as she was curious. Oh, we are here to talk to the Mizukage, Gara told them simply, as they heard Konkuro growl. Why do you call them by name, but I am remembered as Catman? Konkuro yelled out as he was annoyed with Naruto. Well, I remember Gara because I fought him, Temari because of her brutality, but you. I remember, you trying to switch your gender with makeup, looking like a cat and all. As everyone started to laugh except for Conkuro. It is war paint, Conkuro yelled out. A cute waitress then came at the table. Can I take your order? Immediately Conkuro calmed down. 
as he looked over at the waitress. Well, I would like to order enough food for me and a cutie like you to share on our date, said Conkrow as he tried his best to flirt with the girl. So, what do you say? You want to spend some time with the sand, most eligible bachelor, Conkrow asks. Sorry sir, but I already have a boyfriend and I am happily in love with him, the girl told him as she then looked by Conkrow and saw Naruto as she blushed slightly. She then pulled out a magazine as she held it up to Naruto. Will you please sign this Naruto she asked, bowing her head while still blushing. As Naruto signed it, as the girl hugged the magazine, she then took their orders as she rushed off to get their food. Kankuro then turned to Naruto. What the hell just happened, he asked. Well, Naruto here is famous for the rebellion. But if you ask me, he should be famous for something else, Megamin told them as she winked at Naruto, making him blush a bit. But Conkrow wasn't listening to that part as he was mumbling, lucky bastard. Conkrow, I don't understand why you try to get all these different females to spend time with you and they don't want to, said Gara. Why is everyone picking on me today? Conkrow asked himself. I want a hot girlfriend to spend my time with, said Conkrow. Gara looked at him curiously. What's a girlfriend? Gara asked. Really? said Haku. Well, yes, I am a Jinjulki that was hated by my village and recently just found out that I should accept myself, so I wasn't told about any of this. Note, said Temari, take Gara to a sex ed class before he become the Kazekage. As Kankuro said, teach Gara how to be a ladies man when we get home. Seeing that he's going to become the new Kazekage, girls are going to be all over him and then I am going to be right side of him, being his brother and all. And they're going to be all over me as well, said Conkuro as he chuckled to himself as he imagined himself in a world with a lot of girls surrounding him. And with that, they spent some more time talking and enjoying himself until Gara's team was called up to the tower. As they arrived, good day Mizukagi. I trust that your day is going well, said Gara. Yes, quite good, Ambassador. So please tell me, what brings you all the way here from the sand? May asks. Our council wish to ask for your forgiveness about the attack on Konoha and your ninjas being caught up in all of it. And they would like us to sign a treaty between both our villages. Gara told her decide to keep the meeting as simple as possible. Now why should I team up with your village? Seeing that the treaty between you and Konoha was broken down so simply. Besides, what could I possibly need from the sand? May asks as she sit down behind her decks. Well Mizukage, if you were to team up with the sand, there is a high demand for water and such cooling products that we are unable to have a mass quantity so I am sure we can create quite a few trade between our villages. Hmm, said May. That might be quite good for us. How about we take this to the council so we can put it on paper? As Temari smile, ever since his seal has been fixed, Gara has become a different person. Thank you Naruto, said Temari. You have brought him back to our family. Back at Konoha, Kushina and the others were in a meeting as they want to start a rebellion against Minato. So how are our numbers, asked Kushina. So far we have 100% of the Jennings, 65% of the Chonins and 40% of the Jonins and sadly only 30% of the Anvus, said Shikaku as he placed down a scroll. So we have a lot of low ranking ninjas, but we still have to get some anvils. Will this truly be enough in which he asks, worrying about what is coming? It doesn't matter what happens, said Tasume. We will show Minato even with our low numbers. Our will of fire will burn strongly. Isn't that right, Saratobi? said Tasume as she looked over to the leader of this group. Yes, Tasume, we must show the village that I am willing to fix my mistake and make sure our village stay the good name it is known for. Saratobi told them with a sad smile, Minato, where did I go wrong in picking you? I thought you would be different. Apparently I should have let Kushina be the cage, as right now she seemed to be the only reliable good person. And Minato you have strayed from the light and turned into something dark. Power has corrupted you, said Saratobi. But guys, let me finish this episode right here. If you want to see the next part of this, you already know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification to stay posted. 
Remember to share this to all of your friends on your social media platform and also go ahead and check out the rest of the what ifs that I posted. I post a new episode of what if Naruto took his training seriously and I also post a new episode of what if Naruto had multiple people inside of him. And I also posted what if Naruto was taken by Orochimaru so go ahead and check out that as well. And thank you all for your help and your support but for now I'm out of here. Peace.